What's next for real estate really is how do we make that search process faster, more delightful, more accurate, easier to sort of use. So I think that is going to be really interesting and it is a hard problem. And I think everyone is trying to figure out how do we sort of really create an experience that people want there. In the world of housing, the data is constantly changing. Homes are listed and sold in a matter of seconds. And all of that data needs to be categorized, sorted, and implemented in a way that makes it easy for home buyers or renters to find it. Redfin is at the top of the game in terms of the housing market, and they're using some incredible AI technology to help build their strengths. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by Ariel Dos Santos, SVP product and design at Redfin. Welcome, Ariel. Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be here. Full disclosure, I did tell you before we started that I am in the market for a house. And that's actually the reason why we have you on the show today, is to help that me find good. a house. Let's find one, let's go do it. All right, so Redfin is using AI to help home buyers find what they want, even when they don't know what that is. Can you walk me through what that actually means? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's actually really fun to look back in Redfin's history a little bit and talk about one of our favorite products at Redfin, which is our recommendations product. And so, you know, the way you think about a home search and a traditional home search is you go and you say, okay, I want three bedrooms. I want a yard. I want to have a basement. Uh, you put those things into a filter because you think that's what you want. And then you get those results back. It's a very typical um, sort of how any search or marketplace works. What we realized with Redfin really early on is by looking at what you're actually looking on the site, we actually are able to predict what homes you're actually interested in. And from that was born what we call our recommendation product, which we've been working on for almost two decades now um, and continually getting better and better saying, yeah, actually, it doesn't look like you really want three bedrooms. It looks like you actually click on a lot of five bedroom homes. And it looks like you favorite homes that are sort of have different characteristics than you've explicitly told us. And so this whole idea of being able to implicitly understand the things that you're looking for and then be able to serve them back to you, whether it be via an email or a push notification, has been really, really sort of transformative for the way Redfin tries to help people find their home. But the other part that we've actually launched uh, about a year ago was sort of this idea of, well, how can we use AI to really be able to, okay, now you're on the site. We sent you that email. You got to that page. You found the home that you think is really good. But there's a lot of information to consume about a home. You know, hey, what kind of heating system does it have? When does it build? What schools is it close to? All sorts of things that you want to know. And when you look at a detail page on Redfin, there's a lot of processing. And we said, well, how can we use AI to really make it very easy for you to be able to get answers to those questions? And so we launched this thing, which we called Ask Redfin, which you, you know, when you get on a detail page, you're able to ask a question about that home. And our sort of generative AI models uh, take that question and are able to answer back to you. And the beauty of it, the thing that we really loved and really wanted to make sure was part of the experience was that we never wanted it to feel like it was trying to replace what an agent would be able to do. So we're trying to answer a lot of those questions for you in the hopes that you are going to choose to go to that home and meet with one of our agents and be able to go on that tour. So there's a ton of data, right? A tremendous amount of data that goes into this. How is Redfin managing all that? So it's like an efficient process for the user on the front end. Yeah, you know, you can imagine that, you know, I was thinking about it a little bit this morning in advance of our conversation, but our detail pages probably has at least... 10 to 15 different sources of data that we're getting in, whether it be photos, the estimate, schools data, climate data, all sorts of stuff. And then you multiply that by the number of pages that are on Redfin. So you've got over a hundred million pages and you just think about the scale of that data. And so it's super, super important that a, all of those data pipelines are really well instrumented. We know their status. If one of our pipelines goes down, it's sort of, everyone gets on to figure out what's going on because imagine showing up to Redfin tomorrow and all of a sudden there are no photos. That wouldn't be just a little bit of a, okay, well, we'll get them back as soon as possible. It's a pretty core part of the experience. So we've got all of that sort of instrumented. So as soon as any of our services, whether it be internal services or external services that we rely on have any issue, we're really able to sort of respond very quickly and get the site back up and running because we want to make our users and our customers sort of get all of that data really, really easily. It's not just like the data that you currently have in your DBs also and all of your different sources. You have Homes are coming out to the market every second. How are you managing this constantly changing information? We have both 
technology solutions that allow us to sort of understand the state of every sort of MLS feed, which is where to where we're getting a majority of our, you know, when a home hits the market, it goes through an MLS, that data ends up getting sent to us. And then we got to get it up on the site really quickly. We really pride ourselves. You know, if a home hits the market, you got to be able to go to Redfin and see it almost instantaneously. And so all of those services are sort of, you know, what we call tier one services that we have to make sure they're up and when there's changes. And the challenge is that those services are not services we own. And so you could have an MLS and all of a sudden their feed is down. Well, how do we recover from that? And how do we understand that? And how do we sort of backfill the data in the case where it does go down. And so it really is, you know, having sort of that visibility across the entire stack, all the way from where we get the feed to when it shows up on our site. Um, and that's how we manage a lot of that data coming in. So like the data that you're getting from, let's say like third party, by like MLS services, whatever, how do you prep that data for your AI products? Redfin is really uh, thoughtful and very much a leader in trying to make sure we follow fair housing guidelines and not only follow it, but really sort of set a standard for how do we want to think about ensuring our customers are not sort of exposed to biases. And so we really got to make sure there's rules and regulation or, well, who can access that data? How can you manipulate that data? What can you do with that data? And once you're using that data, well, how do you ensure that that, you know, the use of it continues to stay in ways that we sort of are required to do it in ways that we want to really do. You know, that was a big part of when we built that product, Ask Redfin, that I mentioned is, I would say we probably spent more time trying to figure out how do we make sure that this meets our bar for fairness and equality than we did in actually building the product. Like the actual work to sort of figure out, okay, a customer has a question, the question looks like this, do we know how to answer? Yeah, that is hard. And that is known, but how do we make sure it doesn't answer the questions that it really shouldn't answer? And you can imagine there are people, all sorts of people trying to do different things to different bots, either for legitimate reasons or just for sort of, I want to see what I can get this bot to say. And we spent a lot of our time, you know, we built a series of tests and evaluators and we would run our bot responses through these evaluators. I and mean, we'd get a report card. It was like it was going to school and we'd have a meeting like, okay, we made a bunch of changes. How did it do? And we had all sorts of bars and that took a lot of time. So you had to, to build in safeguards. Now, not getting into specifics, but you said you have like a report card that you're running against this, in particular, uh, the Ask Redfin. Exactly. And we built a variety of different tests around how well does it do against fair housing guidelines, tests around accuracy, tests around sort of helpfulness. We've all used AI agents or bots that are just annoying they ask you the same question over and over. They don't understand the context of the conversation. And so we had a whole set of tests of like, is it helpful? We had one evaluator, which was sort of trying to figure out, is it too salesy? One of our earlier variations of it was, you know, you'd ask a question and pretty much you would always say, Are you, do you want to go toward the house? And they were like, whoa, 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 hold on. I'm just trying to figure out whether the roof was built in this year or this year. I may want to tour the house, but let's tone it down a little bit. So we've sort of tuned down a lot of our knobs to really make sure the product, A, helps customers answer questions about their homes that they're interested in, in an easy, fair way to do it, but also helps you take that next step when the next step is the right thing for you, whether it be touring your home or getting in touch with one of our agents. So a lot of the stuff we've been talking about is just the tremendous amount of housing market data you use, but you also mentioned that you're using data points that are coming from your customers as well, your consumers. How do you leverage that consumer data to give people what they really want? You have people using Redfin all the time. And the best thing any product can do is take how you're using the product and try to create a product that is better for you based on the way you are using it. So, you know, for example, um, Redfin, you know, over the last couple of years launched, it, you know, we also have rentals. And so you have some people that are kind of in that Venn diagram. They are both in the market for to buy a home. And they're also in the market for renting at home. And so, well, great. Well, we, we have that data. So now we're doing things like when we see you kind of be in both worlds, we're able to sort of, when you're on a rentals page, say, hey, by the way, here are some homes that are for sale that are sort of in the same mortgage payment of the rent prices that you're looking for. And sort of try to use that data to really help you say, hey, you know, I know I really want to rent. And maybe that's what our plan is for the next sort of six months for a year. But we know that in a year or two, you know, my partner and I really want to buy a home and we want to start looking at it. And the, the beauty of trying to, you know, have now rentals data and the Redfin estimate and uh, Redfin, you know, recommendations, 
really let us sort of use all of that data to ideally kind of create, you know, in my sort of dream, everyone's Redfin experience is very, very different. You're going to open the app and you're going to see a totally different set of homes um, than I will. And leveraging all the data, calculating all the data, you know, it's really fun. It's an incredible data set to be able to play with. A lot of private info is in this data though. So how are you managing privacy on top of all these other data needs? There's a variety of ways to sort of think about privacy. One, you know, we talked about sort of the rules and the regulations and the governance with the data and where it's stored in Redfin and who has access to it and how can you access it. And that is incredibly important to make sure that, you know, we're not letting your data sort of be out there for everyone to access. Um, and then the second part is that it's really important to be transparent with our customers about how we're using that data. Uh, and recommendations is a little bit tricky because sometimes people are surprised. They're like, how did you send me this? And, you know, we're able to sort of explain that, how we're able to sort of use recommendations and your sort of user behavior to do that. So we think about sort of governance on one hand and making sure we have everything sort of uh, really in a great space uh, internally. And then we think about being transparent with our customers and making easy for them to understand. You know, we, none of us like the products where you go and try to understand how they're using a your data and it's impossible to understand. You're like, I still don't know what you're doing with it. Um, I think we've prided ourselves on trying to be really transparent about how we use data to create a better sort of uh, circuit experience for you. I think we talked a little bit about Ask Redfin and something that I want to ask you is you implemented it and you told me about the safeguards, but what was the biggest challenge you had, especially with integrating generative AI? I know you said that we have to make sure it's keeping in track. I mean, like, so when I'm on, for example, this is a question that I would ask, like, I'm asking about details in this house that I found through Ask Redfin. How far is the net that it will look to give me any comparisons? Can I compare? Like, can I say, can you give me some comparisons similar to this house? Can I do that in Ask Redfin? Not yet. We started our first, our first sort of foray into it was really, let's answer all the questions about a particular home that you are interested in. That data set already is really large and has a lot of information for us to help process. We are actively experimenting with how do we bring that same capability further up the funnel when you are hey, I'm actually not even sure what I want. You know, there are people that show up to Redfin and they don't know what they're looking for. They don't even know what 1,400 square feet, you know, or 1,200 square feet is. And so how can we help AI start asking those questions and really help you hone in on that? That is obviously a much larger problem. So we're being really thoughtful about how we approach that. But once we crack that, I think it's also going to turn Redfin into a much better place for you to figure out how you find that home and how you tell us exactly what we want to do with it. So that I think is one of the things that is really interesting for us is how we sort of bring it up the funnel and broaden our net a little bit. So yeah, because like natural language, if I could if I could talk to Ask Redfin and tell it in natural language what I'm looking for which is a much more difficult, a tremendously difficult search because it's very broad and everyone has their, their own way of saying, like you said, like I wouldn't know what 1400 square feet looks like, not really. That, that kind of, the language is gonna be so specific to the person asking that that search becomes very, very difficult, especially how many pages did you say Redfin has? Is it like 100 million? Over 100 million pages. Oh my God, that's a tremendous amount of data to look through. So what challenges are you, is Redfin facing currently with their data management? Like what's or NAI implementation? Managing and maintaining all of that data in a way that is sort of fast and available and reliable and easy for everyone to sort of be able to consume is a really big thing. And, you know, we're always working on that. And I think the other part of AI that is interesting for us, uh, and I think for everyone, is just the speed at which it's evolving. If you think about when we were working on Ask Redfin, you know, we did an evaluation of a bunch of different models out there. We picked a model. You almost have to do that evaluation at least once a quarter because the way these models are advancing are so fast and so, you know, there are things where are like, okay, the models can't do X. And then three months later, turns out the models can now do X. And so that, you know, has never been something anyone work in a product. It's ever sort of that pace of change, you know, you used to think about sort of things happening. Okay, maybe in two years, we'll now sort of be able to process this data in half the time. And so, all right, well, we've got two years and we'll sort of figure it out. We're now talking in weeks and months of the change and the rapid acceleration of these models. And so just trying to make sure, are we using the best one? Hey, did that model evolve in a way that made our product not as good as we want it to? So looking ahead, what do you think is next for real estate and AI? Do you see AI ever handling negotiations or 
contract drafting or even like predicting market trends? What's next for real estate really is what we talked about, which is how do we make that search process faster, more delightful, more accurate, easier to sort of use. So I think that is going to be really interesting and it is a hard problem. And I think everyone is trying to figure out how do we sort of really create an experience that people want there? I do think there will be other places where AI will sort of just make things more efficient. You know, think about any process ever, even, you know, just take the concept of sort of e-signing a document versus sort of having to drive to a place. And that in itself made that process a lot faster. And I'm sure AI is going to do things around that and sort of making transactional parts a little bit easier. I think, you know, there's always going to be humans involved because I think this is, for most people, going to be the biggest purchase of their life. The biggest financial decision that they ever make will be buying a home. And so I think there will be humans playing a really important role in that. And I think we really believe in that in Redfin. Um, and, you know, what they may do may evolve like every other role, but I think it's going to be really important to have sort of that expertise and that knowledge of the market and that understanding of it. So. Right. Okay. So Ariel, you are an expert. I need a, just one last recommendation from you before I go into my home search. This is a very personal question that I'm just throwing out there. First, I think you should download the Redfin app because it's really, really good and you should use it. I'll tell you what I've always done every time I've been in the housing circus. I actually do like to sit, you know, if you're searching by yourself, you do this by yourself. If you're searching with someone else's, we used to like to do this exercise or say, okay, I'm going to write down the top 10 things I want in our next place. And my wife was she's going to write down the top 10 things. And then we would compare. And, you know, I wanted a, you know, our first house that we ever bought together. All I wanted was a kitchen, like a really nice kitchen. And, you know, she was like, I really want to be in a place where we have access to playgrounds because, you know, we're going to have kids and we want to be able to walk to playgrounds. And so we looked at those things and that let us really narrow down the search and be able to figure out what we wanted. So do that, make your list and then come to Redfin and Either put in your search filters, use Ask Redfin, and hopefully soon you'll be able to use some of our search experiences that we're working on as well. Ariel, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the time that you spent with me, giving me advice in particular on how to buy a house, but also tell me all of the really cool things that Redfin is doing. And for all of you listening, thank you so much again for watching and listening to AI in Action. You can find us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you listen and watch podcasts. Make sure to subscribe to learn more about how AI is being put into practice. See you again soon.